Hi everyone. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how you can improve your writing. Um, hopefully with a very kind of step by step sort of approach. Um, and again, this, this doesn't work for everyone and this isn't always going to fix everything, but it's something that hopefully is, is going to feel tangible so that when people are like, Hey, you should get better at your writing. You're not like, Oh, okay. What do I do? <laughs> hopefully you've got something that is like, okay, that makes sense. That, that will help. So um, what I did here is I started with 10 very, very basic sentences um, about a dog. And this is not my dog. This is a made up dog. Um, and I just, I wanted it to sound as basic, but still grammatically correct. Like we don't have any agreement errors. Um, like I don't have, like I has a dog. Um, so everything in here is already grammatically correct. It's, it's how do we make writing better when it's already um, decent. So um, let's read this. This is 10 very basic sentences and we're gonna try and just build from here, right? Um, so I have a dog, his name is Barnacle. He is brown, he is big, he is soft. He is loving. He is an old friend. He sleeps a lot. He loves to eat. He loves cuddles. Now, hopefully you guys can see that this is um, correct, but not very interesting. Um, and hopefully you can see that we can actually still improve on this, um, that this isn't kind of like a finished product. So here's our very first thing we're going to do. So we're going to think of the emotion that you want your reader to have while they're reading your text. And you're going to think of adjectives to help the reader picture what you're picturing. So an adjective is a word that describes a noun. So any word that could describe a dog, like a nice dog, a happy dog, a gentle dog, those kind of words. Um, and so in my, so let me read here in the blue. I want people to fall in love with the dog in my story. I want to portray him as a loyal, faithful old dog. So with my, with my 10 basic sentences, you can see I'm, I'm actually not changing every sentence. I'm just going step at a time. I'm going to add in more adjectives. Now, I already have an adjectives like big, soft, loving, and you might think like this is going to be overkill and it might, but better to have overkill with too many adjectives than not enough. And then you have this boring story. Um, and then hopefully over time, you know, the pendulum will sway back to a more happy medium. Um, but if we don't move that pendulum, then we're not moving anywhere. So um, underlined and in blue are the things that I've added in. So here are the new adjectives I have. I have, I have a big gentle dog. His name is Barnacle. He is dark brown. He is big. He is soft. He is loving. He's an old and loyal dog. He sleeps a lot. He loves to eat. He loves tender and gentle cuddles. Now, when I wrote this, the only thing I knew I was going to write about was having a dog. So I literally wrote my very first line was I have a dog and then I just made it up from there. So it's not like I had this amazing story in my mind. It's not like I'm like, okay, I know exactly how I'm going to write this. I just started writing and, and out it started to come. Um, and so very first step, you write down 10 sentences that all are on the same subject. Next is you start to add in adjectives. Next step is we're going to add in adverbs. Now adverbs are basically identical to adjectives, but instead of describing the noun, they describe a verb. So if someone were walking, you would then describe how they walk. Um, so let me read this. So it says, look at your adverbs, try to create a sense of place or a sense of homelessness. What can you add to your verbs to make them say more? So as you're writing a story, it can be about a person, it can be about a boat, a vacation. You either want people to feel like they totally understand it, like you're going to make it feel like it's home, or you want to add in this kind of element of mystery. And then you're going to use in words that kind of space your reader from your subject so that that way they're like, oh, I need to find out more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it feel like there's a sense of place. I want them to be like, yep, I know that dog. So. I want people to feel as though I'm so lucky for having this dog and that he is so lucky to have me. I want the readers to feel like I have spent an amazing lifetime with this amazing dog. He belongs to me and I belong to him. So um, I'm adding in adverbs that are hopefully going to add more to that idea that I want to convey. So as you can see, I'm only adding in three words. And um, so you don't have to change the whole story all at once. It can be little by little by little. So I have a big gentle dog. His name is Barnacle. He is dark brown. He is big. He is soft. He is loving. He is an old and loyal dog. He sleeps a lot and deeply. He loves to eat calmly and often. He loves tender and gentle cuddles. So what I did here is by adding in these adverbs, I'm starting to make him sound a little bit older because if you look at puppies and younger dogs, they just race through their food. Um, and like a dog that's like one or two or three, they don't tend to sleep a ton, but then you get a dog that's like 16 and 20, they sleep a lot. So um, I'm starting to kind of plant the seed that maybe he's older, maybe he's not so healthy, um, but he's, he's still a super happy dog. All right, next, I'm gonna, so add more content. 
It says, look at the things that you can add um, that will provide an explanation or a context. So what is the backstory? Give some background information. So let me read you. This is kind of the blue is kind of what's going on in my mind. I want people to feel like they're getting to know Barnacle. They will only get to know him more if I give them more information. But I also want to try to do it in a bit of a poetic or figurative way to add some style at the same time. I'm going to try to add in background information that people can relate to or easily understand. I want Barnacle to feel like everyone's dog, but also the dog that no one was lucky enough to have but me. I almost want my reader to become aware of my dog's age before I seemingly do. Like, I want the reader to be like, oh, I think this dog is getting old. I think this dog is older. But I want them to think, oh, I don't think the author knows that the dog is older yet. I think the author thinks that maybe he's still like a puppy or something. Well, not a puppy, but like a middle-aged dog. So what you're going to see here is I've added in a lot in this one because intentionally I did that for every line. I said, okay, like I, I made a statement. I have, I have a big gentle dog. What is something I can say to add on to that? Because if you want people to connect to your story or to connect to your the, the character in your story, which is your dog, um, they do that with, with knowing things about them. That's how people work, right? Like the more you know someone, the more you hear stories about their life, the more you're like, okay, I understand that person. So I'm trying to just give like a lot of story within my story. So... What I realized, though, is that a lot of the sentences I added in were already kind of more poetic than I really wanted them to be. But I was like, as I was writing them, I'm like, I like this. So I just kept it. Um, an easy way to think of doing this is you can make like metaphors and similes to help you in your description. But even if you don't add in metaphors and similes, just by giving in more background information, you're already making your story more understandable and more relatable. And your characters are then going to feel like they're starting to come to life. So let's read keeping in mind the underlined blue is new from the last one okay so the last one up here was just this many sentences down here the underlined in blue is new and um what i've done is again i just i read the one sentence and then i added more onto that sentence and then i went to the next sentence and i added more onto that sentence so i have a big gentle dog i found him one day or rather he found me i was playing by the rocks on the edge of the ocean when this small and frightened puppy wandered to me now, keep in mind, I'm actually going to change the sentence quite a bit later on because it's just, it's an idea, but it could be smoother, okay? So it's, again, I'm not, it's, it, this is not a perfect sentence yet, but I'm just getting stuff out. His name is Barnacle. He seems scratched and injured from walking on the barnacle-covered rocks. I wanted to give him a name that would make him strong and resilient, just like his surroundings. Now, keep in mind, up at this point, I didn't even know why I named him Barnacle. I think I was thinking of like some sea shanty and I was like, Barnacle! And that was it. Like, and as I'm writing this and I'm like, ooh... I want my reader to feel sorry for poor Barnacle. So I was like, oh, if he's scratched or injured, they're going to feel sorry for him. So that's why I added that in. I didn't have this idea in my mind at the beginning. This is actually kind of why going through and editing your work um, really helps because then you, you, you might not always end up with the idea you started with. So let me keep reading. He is dark brown. He's the kind of brown that reminds people of rich coffee and burning caramel. He is big. He never used to be, but he grew into adulthood like an exploding can of gasoline. He is soft. The fur behind his ears reminds me of bunnies or spring chicks. He is loving. He opens his heart and never looks back. He is an old and loyal dog. He belongs to me and I belong to him. He sleeps a lot and deeply. He never used to need that much sleep, but now that gray and white have made their home on his loving face, he naps more and more. He loves to eat calmly and often. Sometimes I wonder if he lacks energy or strength, but I know he's doing just fine. He loves tender and gentle cuddles. His happy place is next to me, and that's exactly where we both belong. All right, next, eliminate any unnecessary repetition. So I want to avoid saying he a thousand times. So I'm going to go back and maybe use his name three or four times and then refer to him with other affectionate nicknames. So I'm not going to read this one through, but basically I took he, so one, two, three, four, five instances of the word he, and I swapped them out for barnacle three times. So barnacle, barnacle, barnacle. Then I call him one time, I call him my handsome little canine. And then another time I call him my free little buddy. So you may not have to do this depending on what you're writing about. You may be like, like, let's say you're talking about different trees. I mean, now, actually, having said that, if you're talking about trees, you might say the word tree a thousand times. So you might want to find other ways of saying tree. Um, that's kind of an easy, not an easy way, but, but a way to make your writing better is to just not have to rely on the same word all the time to show that you know multiple words. Okay, let's look at the next step. So change the order of your words. Go back and work in different ways to start your sentences. Perhaps start a sentence with an adverb, a question, an exclamation. If you vary your sentence structure, it adds style and interest. So at this point, I feel like people are starting to get to know my dog, but I want them to start to become impressed with my writing, 
right? Like now the connection's been made, but now I want them to be like, ooh, look at her writing. I want to look at the order of the words in my sentence by shaking it up a bit. I can create sentences that are different and therefore more interesting. So um, this is tricky because it's not really until you're older, like later in your career that you start to realize like, wow, all of our sentences kind of have the same sort of order. Like our people words, like our pronouns are always kind of at a certain point in the sentence. And then our nouns are always kind of at a certain points in the sentence. And then our adjectives are at a certain point. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you can change that a little bit, like maybe haven't, like normally we would say, oh, hi, how are you in a, in a sentence? But maybe instead of say, saying, oh, hi, how are you? If you're like, you there, how are you? It just changes it up a little bit um, because any time that we sort of deviate from the norm, then it catches people's interest. And then they're like, ooh, look at that. That was different. So what I did here is everything that is underlined and big or underlined in blue um, is I just changed the order a little bit. So for example, here, I think I had loving is the word that best describes me. I think what did I have up here? Um, we're going to see who can find this first. He is there. I had a, he is loving. All right. Like it's kind of a bit of a boring sentence. Just he is loving. Noun, verb, there we are. So let's go here. Loving is the word that best describes him. Hopefully you can see that that's just, it's just different enough that it's made it actually better writing. When I've got here, is he big? Absolutely. Let's come back up here. What did I have? I had, um, he is big. Hopefully you guys can see here. I have, he is big, right? And I had, to, he is loving. So when I have that order, that's kind of what we would expect. When I come down here and I say, is he big? Absolutely. It just changes it up a bit. It just gives it a, a bit of a different style. When I have, I have eating is more of a common methodical process now than it ever used to be. What did I have? I actually changed that one quite a bit. I have my furry little buddy loves to eat calmly and often. I think I only changed this one because I could, because I like the idea of my furry little buddy, but I started it with a verb, which is not usually what we tend to do. Um, up here in the very first line I have, um, I found him one day or rather he found me. That was not a bad sentence. But I wanted to have, I wanted to start with a different kind of word that wasn't a pronoun, wasn't a verb. Look at this. I've got as if by some guided wind of destiny, I found him one day or rather he found me. So I kept this stuff here, but I was able to start a sentence with the word as, which we normally, normally don't do. So it just kind of changes it up a bit. Here I've got um, scratch, uh, scratches and painful gouges marked his tender paws. Up here I have... He seemed scratched and injured from walking on the barnacle covered rocks. I mean, that's reasonable. That's grammatically correct. It's like you can read that and get some great imagery in your mind. But the writing is maybe not so great. The content is good, but the writing is not interesting, right? Like all of the writing in this paragraph is basically the same. Um, it's only down here where then I have scratches and painful gouges. And I'm starting with the noun. I'm not starting with the word he or the dog. Okay, so let me uh, go to the next one. It says, add in tension and memorable description. How do you do this? Add in adjectives that normally wouldn't describe what you're describing. Add in oxymorons. Add in words that add flavor and style. You can do this by adding in more adjectives and adverbs. So here's one of the things that actually I'm gonna be getting my students to do in a couple days is using words. So like, let's say using a taste word to describe something that you're describing for sight or using a sound word to describe something that you'd normally taste, right? Like, so mixing those words intentionally, and if you do it effectively, it can be a really good outcome. Like, I'm not gonna say, for example, I have a delicious dog. I mean, that sounds like I'm eating him and that's kind of weird and whatever. But if I said, for example, um, like if I, if I thought of the word booming, I have a booming dog. Usually I wouldn't use that word to describe a dog. Like you'd say, I have a big dog, a fluffy dog, a nice dog. Or if I said, I have a thunderous dog. Well, dogs don't make thunder like ever. So normally thunderous isn't a word that goes with a dog. But if I say I have a thunderous dog, now all of a sudden that's interesting writing. So sometimes you can create really interesting images in people's minds if you occasionally and effectively use different words that normally we don't use. So what I tried to do is, is the underlined words. I tried to either add in just more adjectives or, or adverbs. And when I could, I tried to add in words that were maybe a little bit different, like not your typical, not just more interesting or more descriptive, different. Like I wouldn't, like for example, my handsome little canine is hopelessly soft. Well, fur doesn't have hope. Softness doesn't have hope. So in, in a way that kind of like, 
like I could say incredibly soft or like um, f fantastically soft and that would make sense but hopelessly soft fur, fur doesn't have hope so that doesn't really make sense so ma it makes it just a little bit different um, pickled gouges right to me that one actually was kind of my favorite I'm just gonna say because no one ever takes like a gouge mark on their you know foot and they're like oh let me just shove this in this Bix pickle jar and I'm gonna add pickle juice to my cut but yet when you say a pickled gouge you get this feeling of this like really raw puckered citrusy looking cut mark um and that's what I wanted I wanted it to sound really horrible so I was like pickled I don't know where that came from but it just kind of came out of nowhere so um and again destiny destiny is that something you can steal I don't know so I wrote it in there because I thought ooh, that adds like a little bit of mystery um for example like jagged rocks sure rocks can be jagged but unyielding well, I don't know like unyielding like rocks don't really yield they're they're rocks they're inanimate like they don't yield to anyone um so let's read this is just a little bit different so I have a big gentle dog with a rich and burning sense of wonder again like you can't have a burning sense of wonder you can't have word like a sense of wonder that's on fire you're like oh my gosh my sense of wonder it's smoking it doesn't work but in this one a burning sense of wonder it makes it sound really intense so I think it kind of works as if by some guided wind of stolen destiny, I found him one blustery day, or rather, he found me. While I was playing by the jagged and unyielding rocks on the edge of the crushing and thunderous ocean, this small and frightened puppy wandered near. His name is Barnacle. Serrated scratches and painful pickled gouges mark his tender and frayed paws. He seemed hurt from walking on the barnacle-covered grinding rocks. I wanted to give him a name that would make him strong and resilient, just like his abrupt and percussive surroundings. Barnacle is dark brown. He's the kind of brown that reminds people of rich, silky coffee and bubbling, burning caramel. Is he big? Absolutely. He never used to be, but he grew into adulthood like an exploding can of gasoline. My handsome little canine is hopelessly soft. The fur behind his ears reminds me of fuzzy, helpless bunnies or skittish yellow spring chicks. Loving is the word that best describes him. He opens his heart and never looks back. Barnacle is an old and loyal dog. He belongs to me and I belong to him. He sleeps a lot and deeply. He never used to need to sleep that much, but now that Grey and White have innocently made their permanent home on his weathered and loving face, he naps more and more. Eating is more of a calm and methodical process now than it ever used to be. Sometimes I wonder if he lacks energy or strength, but I know he's doing just fine. Barnacle loves tender and gentle cuddles. His happy place is next to me, and that's exactly where we both belong. All right, I think this is the last little step. So it says play around with punctuation and sentence length. Consider all the punctuation marks that you could easily add. So we got brackets, parentheses, colons, semicolons, periods, question marks, all that stuff. So try to incorporate different punctuation marks. This will force you to have different types of sentences. Another thing you can do is have one word sentence sequences. So that's, let me show you, that's like right here. When you've got three, three words, but they're all like individual sentences, it just, it just switches it up a bit. Um, so what I intentionally did is you can see here, I added a question and then I answered it. I've got one word sentences, I've now got paragraphs or um, uh, parentheses, and I now have a colon and I've got a one word sentence down here again. So that was my goal was just to just to change it a little bit. So I've got here, I said, I, has, I, said, I feel like my story is basically done. I just want to tidy up any last things that can make it more unique. Um, so let's read through this and hopefully you're going to see it feels really different from the from where we started, right? <laughs> I have a dog. His name is Barnacle. Hopefully, after all of our changes, um, it feels more interesting. So, I have a big, gentle dog with a rich and burning sense of wonder. As if by some guided wind of stolen destiny, I found him one blustery day. Or rather, he found me. While I was playing by the jagged and unyielding rocks on the edge of the crushing and thunderous ocean, this small and frightened puppy wandered near. His name is Barnacle. Serrated scratches and painful pickled gouges marked his tender and frayed paws. He seemed hurt from walking on the barnacle covered grinding rocks. I wanted to give him a name that would make him strong and resilient, just like his abrupt and percussive surroundings. Was he lost? Abandoned? Forgotten? I searched and searched for his family. I was overjoyed when I was told none could be found. I never thought life would give me such a miracle surprise. Barnacle is dark brown. He's the kind of brown that reminds people of rich, silky coffee and bubbling, burning caramel. Is he big? Absolutely. Huge. Enormous. Gargantuan. He never used to be, but he grew into adulthood like an exploding can of gasoline. My handsome little canine is hopelessly soft. The fur behind his ears reminds me of fuzzy, helpless bunnies or skittish yellow spring chicks. Loving is the word that best describes him. 
He opens his heart and never looks back. Barnacle is an old and loyal dog. After all, we've had a lifetime of memories together. He belongs to me and I belong to him. We do everything together. Eat, nap, and play. He sleeps a lot and deeply. He never used to sleep that much, but now that Gray and White have innocently made their permanent home on his weathered and loving face, he naps more and more. Eating is more of a calm and methodical process now than it ever used to be. Sometimes I wonder if he lacks energy or strength, but I know he's doing just fine. Barnacle loves tender and gentle cuddles. His happy place is next to me, and that's exactly where we both belong. Barnacle. He's the best. So, hopefully this helps. Um... And remember, when you are trying to make your writing better, I, I would hazard a guess that most authors don't just simply become better overnight and they don't just write a best-selling novel from start to finish. Like, keep in mind, the best authors in the world, they all have editors. They all have people that read through their work and are like, mm, this should change, this needs to go, you need to tidy this up, fix this over here, right? These are people that make their money through writing and they still have people that fix their writing for them okay so don't don't sit there thinking oh well I, I i feel so dumb i have to do this eight times in a row to get it right yeah so what a lot of professionals do too so don't worry about that just simply start with 10 basic sentences all on the same topic and then methodically go in and then throw in some adjectives throw in some adverbs what is this one oh add in backstory add in a lot of backstory that you're like oh I, yeah i suppose i could I could clarify that. I could give more information. I could explain that a little bit better. Avoid the unnecessary repetition. Um, change your sentence order so that that way, um, you know, it just shakes things up a bit. Um, add in either tension or friction or just add in different kinds of words that are going to throw people a little bit. And you don't want it to be super weird. Like you're not going to be like one day I was eating some zippy soup. I, I don't know if that works. That's maybe just simply weird. Sometimes you can have weird and it works. I think zippy soup does not work, <laughs> but you, you, you're the judge of that. Um, play around with punctuation marks because by forcing, like, look at this. This is actually funny. By forcing myself, I was like, oh, I have to ask a question. I actually forgot to address the fact that I found this puppy and then I just took him home, right? Like in, in my first seven versions, I just simply took him home. It wasn't until I was like, oh, maybe I should write in the fact that I tried to do my due diligence by finding if he had a proper home or not. Um, so I actually seemed like a better person by the end of story eight than I did by story seven. Um, so again, and this was intentional. I was like, okay, I need to add in question marks. I need to have a semicolon, exclamation mark, one, three, one word sentences, you know, parentheses, <laughs> colon. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember all these punctuation marks. Um, and then there we are. So hopefully this helps and good luck.